So what I will do is I will uh, immediately share my uh, my screen, um, and I'll kindly ask if you could perhaps confirm um, once you're able to see my screen. Just beamed up the presentation slide. Yes, uh, I can see it, okay. and it's in uh, presentation mode. Yes, uh, please proceed. All right, thank you very much. So I'll start then. Um, so, so when 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 I got the email with the list of of topics. Um, my, my immediate thinking was um, I, I wanted to, to pick a topic that would enable me to talk a bit more about um, the research projects that I have been busy with uh, these last uh, few years, at least since I joined the UNSA. Um, and so my talk is really going to be uh, centered around uh, uh, works that we have done in, in, in an attempt to discover insight from uh, scholarly research output uh, produced uh, in higher education institutions, um, and specifically the case here is the University of Zambia. Um, but before we start, I just wanted to mention from the outset that um, some of the things, some of the uh, works uh, that I'm going to talk about um, have been done in conjunction with uh, very talented uh, postgraduate students and finally undergraduate students. Uh, details of these students and the projects are actually available on the uh, um, Research Lab website, which uh, I'm a founding member of. Um, so my, my talk is going to be split into two main parts, really. Um, I thought I would first of all contextualize um, what we term or classify as data-driven problem solving. It turns out that this is a major driving force behind uh, most of the works that we do, at least the work that is centered around uh, data mining uh, or data-driven problem solving. And then I will dive into part two where I will just focus on um, a particular case. Um, so I'll talk about a broad spectrum of uh, projects that we've been working towards in an attempt to um, try and understand this um, square research landscape, at least insofar as Zambia is concerned. But what you notice is that uh, the vast majority of things I'll be talking about can be generalized, um, at least within the African context, and more specifically Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, so I'll start with part one. Um, just wanted to mention uh, from the outset here that um, the major two, um, or at least the technique that we leverage in, in attempting to solve most of these problems I'm going to talk about, um, is supervised machine learning. Um, you'll soon understand why once I start talking about the sort of data that we work with. Um, but just to, I guess, um, make mention of something that most of the people that are on the panel already know of, uh, supervised machine learning is a part of, um, it's a subfield of artificial intelligence, essentially. Um, right, but uh, the key ingredient um, at least in so far as the past and current projects that we've been, we've been attempting uh, to work towards happens to be data. Um, and I think this applies to uh, most of these machine learning centric or AI centric problems or solutions. Um, before I, I get to the stage where I start talking about the square research landscape, um, just to mention that uh, this, this tool that we leverage, or the techniques that we leverage have been applied to other projects uh, that I've been um, a part of. Uh, more recently, uh, beginning uh, last year, we've been attempting to try and figure out how best we can uh, build machine learning models that are aimed at uh, predicting student learning outcomes. Um, this stems from the uh, experience that I've personally had teaching um, one particular first year, uh, uh, first year computer architecture, computer systems and architecture course. Uh, the failure rate happens to be quite high. And so what we've been doing is trying to um, take advantage of these machine learning techniques and indeed data that we already have access to to try and figure out how best we can um, uh, find solutions that will be able to um, guide us in identifying uh, students or learners that are at risk of failing. Um, I should mention upfront here that this is a uh, a, a, a core component of this particular project is being worked on by a group of final year uh, undergraduate students. Um, they'll be presenting their work uh, towards the end of November. Um, again, beginning uh, early last year, um, I personally collaborated with um, a radiologist from the University Teaching Hospitals in Zambia, and the motivation behind this project really centered on, uh, is actually premised on the fact that uh, there's a, um, there's a shortfall of um, human resource in this particular field. So case in point, Zambia has a total of about uh, five qualified radiologists, right? Um, at least in the public, uh, in the public sector. Uh, these five radiologists are meant to, to actually um, 
uh, handle or service a population of approximately 18 million currently. And so what we've been trying to do is trying to figure out how we can address some of these challenges associated with the shortfall of uh, human resource uh, by taking advantage of uh, machine learning uh, techniques. This is to work in progress. Um, as of uh, March this year, we've been working with the Zambia Meteorological Department. I'm, I'm actually doing this project. I'm a part of this project. I'm project member together with colleagues from the School of Engineering, Geomatics, and also um, uh, the Department of Computer Science. So what we're doing is we are working towards translating the manual way of forecasting rainfall um, into an automated process by taking advantage of uh, AI techniques. Um, so in essence, I mean, the underlying theme here in terms of uh, the approach we take to solve these problems really is uh, we go through the, the usual machine uh, learning uh, pipeline processes, right, where we will uh, identify uh, data sources from where we we'll, we'll eventually extract the data. Um, in the case of supervised machine learning techniques, we we'll then uh, prepare data sets that will train um, and subsequently build these inference models that um, would enable us to get more insight into the problems we're attempting to address. Now, in, in the entire process, what we do is we take advantage of well-established uh, methodologies. Uh, in terms of data mining, I think uh, most uh, uh, individuals on the panel will appreciate the fact that there are a number of well-established um, models, right? Uh, what we have done over the past is we've taken advantage of the so-called CRISP-DM model. Um, but irrespective of the model that uh, one would, uh, would, would go for, I think a key point to, to, to emphasize here is that there are certain key phases that tend to be uh, more time consuming. Right? And this is well documented, actually. Um, so I'm just going to uh, ease my way into uh, part two now, where I'll talk about uh, the works that we've done in the Square Research um, uh, field here to try and understand uh, problems associated with uh, Square Research um, um, output at the University of Zambia specifically, or in Zambia in general. Um, so a motivating factor for why we, we've been working in this particular field here is uh, uh, the online visibility of research in Zambia, and in fact, uh, in Africa is, uh, is quite low, right? Um, if you go to places like World Mapa, for instance, they'll visualize the, uh, just how bad the landscape is, right? Uh, if you notice at the tip, there, there, there are certain exceptions, and at the top, like South Africa, for instance, and uh, most countries or some countries in, in the northern part of the continent, but for the most part, um, we see a situation where the vis visibility is quite low uh, on the African continent. Um, if you actually drill down further and try and look at specific academic databases. Uh, like for instance, if you look at uh, uh, worldwide uh, ETD production, what you'll notice is that uh, Africa is again at the tail end. And if you drill down into Africa, you see a situation where um, countries that stand out, uh, uh, countries such as South Africa and, and a few other countries in the northern part of the, um, of the African continent. And the question to ask here is, uh, we are churning out uh, postgraduate students um, all across Africa. Uh, Zambia, uh, for instance, has a total of, uh, you won't believe this, but a total of about 72, I believe, or is it 62 higher education institutions. Now, not all of them will produce postgraduate students, uh, but a good number of them will, especially um, uh, public higher education institutions. So the question is, where is this research that is produced by master students and uh, PhD students? Sorry, I'm just going to pause to ask if you can still hear me, just in case the connection is fine. No, you are not in clear. Okay, thank you very much. Um, um, and, and really, we, the other motivation here is uh, we want a sense of pride, right? Uh, nobody likes uh, this gory picture that is painted when you start looking at uh, academic rankings, for instance. Um, most Zambian uh, higher education institutions are usually at the tail end, right? We're in the thousands here on the world uh, stage. Um, but besides that, um, we are of the view that uh, publicly generated research should be accessible by the wider public, and especially uh, by policymakers. Um, it turns out that, uh, at least for the case of Zambia, there's a great deal of research that is produced um, that actually feeds into uh, policy direction. Um, uh, so in terms of the data sources, um, I, I thought I, I got a screenshot of uh, the institutional repository for NAST just to try and contextualize uh, where exactly we extract this information. 
Um, but what, we do, what we've done in all of these projects that I'm going to talk about is we extract information from infrastructure that we already have in place. Um, top on the list is our institutional repository, which is, um, I guess, a single source of truth that is used to make available research that is uh, published by the University of Zambia. But also, besides that, we have other platforms that are increasingly being set up. So we have uh, an OJS platform, which is used to actually make available um, a number of uh, journals, electronic journals that are overseen by the University of Zambia. And incidentally, I happen to be uh, the technical lead uh, um, in terms of uh, providing advice on how to handle OJS. Um, so we, we, we fundamentally have been working with textual data or, um, or textual content. Um, and what we do is we, we use these data sources to harvest um, both the bit streams, so this would be like the PDF documents that have the actual content, but more importantly also the um, uh, descriptive information about the square, um, uh, or about the bit streams themselves. So things like uh, uh, authors and, and, and the titles associated with publications. These are usually um, uh, textual details that are imputed by uh, either authors of the articles or perhaps a library. Um, so just a few screenshots uh, showcasing the sort of information that we've extracted in the uh, broad spectrum of uh, projects that we've worked towards. Um, so just showcasing the sort of information we're extracting from the bitstreams of the PDF documents. Um, and then an example of uh, Dublin Core encoded descriptive metadata that we extract actually to build these inference models. Um, uh, again, just showcasing uh, the metadata here, we incidentally take advantage of the so-called OIPMH and the OI ORE protocols to harvest the descriptive information. These are standardized protocols that um, are available via OJS and uh, most uh, uh, institutional repositories. Um, and then of course, I mean, before we implement the model, we, 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 we go through the usual um, uh, transformation process where because we're working with textual data here, we typically uh, transform the uh, textual content into either a TF uh, or a representation or TF-IDF representation. Um, this is obviously informed by um, experimental, um, experimental results that we, 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 we get once we are evaluating the models. Um, in terms of the results that we've gotten, I mean, early on in the process, we went through a process, we went through a, a process where we quantified the relative online visibility of research. Uh, it's quite low. Details are available in uh, this publication from 2018. Um, uh, but we see a situation where uh, uh, really the online visibility is extremely low, depressingly low actually. Um, even though the Invest of Zambia happens to be better than the rest of the institutions, we can literally do better. Besides that, one of the things we've noticed is that uh, at least in terms of the district metadata, there appears to be issues associated with uh, the correctness and the cor comprehensiveness of the data itself. Um, and so what we've done, right, um, after getting insight, um, in regards to that is we've built uh, these models that are able to automatically uh, predict metadata elements associated with these uh, publications. Again, details are in this journal article that was uh, published earlier this year. Um, more recently, we were uh, working towards trying to identify how we can take advantage of uh, so-called uh, controlled vocabularies um, to enhance searching and browsing of uh, square research output. Um, and so what we did was we went through a lengthy process of trying to systematically figure out what sort of contro controlled vocabularies would um, associate to the different disciplines at the University of Zambia and subsequently build these models that would be able to automatically predict uh, the controlled subjects uh, of vocabularies associated with the different publications. Um, details including links to um, demos of implementations uh, are available in that publication. Uh, the video. Yes. Tantaferi, sorry to interrupt you. Yes. Uh, you have exactly two minutes remaining. All right, thank you very much. I'm actually about to wind up. Beyond, um, so beyond uh, building these inference models and drawing insights, we feel that um, we, should, we should at least try and prescribe potential solutions to these problems. Um, what we are currently working towards is as a starting point, we're setting up this national ETD portal that is meant to centrally make available um, uh, ETDs from the various um, institutions of higher learning in Zambia. Uh, and of course, this will feed into the different inference models that we've been building or implementing. Um, thank you very much. That is uh, what I had in terms of my presentation.